This conference will now be recorded. Hello, welcome to today's webinar, Stepped Registration and Applying for Exam. My name is Kim. I am the EOCP Director of Operations, and I will be taking you through today's session. We put a lot of work and testing to get the new database up and running. It is unique and no other certification group in Canada has a system like this. While in your profile, some of the things you can do to do or apply for exams, look for courses, see your CEU status and add courses taken that will help you keep your CEUs up to date and add employers and pay dues. Um, the webinar is available obviously under the resources section of the EOCP website. And um, it should take about 25, 30 minutes to go through this uh, webinar. These items will be covered. Registration, stepped registration for existing operators, searching and filters, relationships, career management, including how to apply for exams, and there will be some live examples. If you are not a certified operator, you will ha have to create a profile for yourself. Those of you who were current and certified before November 2017 will have been brought over from the old database. If you are already certified with the EOCP, do not click register. Please log in to your existing profile. The first time existing operators log into the system, you will use the email address we have on file for you. Um, so it, enter your email where it says email and then choose forgot password. If uh, so, we so we can we send you a reset password link. If you don't know the email address, please contact the EUSP office and we will provide that for you. Your password must can be a minimum of six characters, consists of at least one capital letter, one number, and a special special character like a hashtag or ampersand. Um, so you can access it through here, um, through the EOCP website here. And over here where it says login, it'll take you to that screen and then you would just log in. When you're creating a new profile, you have to complete all the fields. Those with the red asterisks cannot be left blank. And then you'll hit submit, choose submit once all of the uh, fields are completed. Operators who were certified prior to November 2017 had their information transferred from the old database to the new CRM. Each operator must go through this process to ensure all information is correct. Once done, you will be able to apply for exams. If you log into your profile and see this screen, you haven't completed the registration process yet. Um, you must click get started and complete the re required sections on the screen until you see the blue finish button and then click on it. So. Um, this is very important. Your relation, if the relationship shows a start date of 0101 2017, that is a default start date and it must be changed. And it must be changed to your actual start date with your employer. And you will not be able to finish the step registration unless you change these default dates. And if the start date is your actual start date, then you'll be able to move forward through the registration process to the finish button. To change your start date, you just right click on the relationship line. You can change the start date by typing the date or using the arrow buttons in the cal calendar um, that pops up. So this is, uh, this is important here. Only put in the primary or billing contact if you are the primary, the main contact person for the organization or the person who is responsible for paying everyone's dues. Otherwise, just leave it blank. If you see your relationship status is impending, please contact EOCP so we can update it and accept it. And you must have at least one relationship in order to submit your exam application. And please note that relationships are with entities, not with a person. So please do not add relationships to your supervisor. We want it linked to where you work. If your employer pays your dues, you can update the billing contact. You will choose um, the actions under the action button. You would then choose update billing under the account uh, column. So I'll show you some examples here. 
I'm going to show you how to edit a relationship. So I have a, an operator profile here. So I have a relationship with EUCP. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to edit that. And I'll just change my start date. So I just um, um, click on the line and then I can actually, I can you know scroll through the calendar or I could actually just type in, type in the, the, the change. I can also put an end date in if, if I no longer work there, I can just add in a new date there and hit submit. Uh, so I have to update my billing preference. This is, a, this is a step that you'll have to do. So I'll have to edit my, um, do my action, update billing, and then I would change this from my, so you can either choose myself or organization. I'll change that to myself, hit submit. It'll be credit card and submit. Then I can actually change my, put an end date in for myself here. So I'll just right click, hit edit, and then I'll put the add the uh, end date in. And then you will see that the relationship has been updated to inactive and it's been grayed out so that um, it won't show up any anymore. Then I'll, I can actually add a relationship. So under action, I'll hit add a relationship and I'll just add one to generic. And I'll just put in operator. And I'll just leave it as, I'll just put it in as yesterday. And then you can see here that there's a new relationship there and it's in pending status until EOCP staff checks it over. So it's really important to, uh, to keep the, um, this information up to date. Um, if you change employers, please make sure that you add the, the last date work to the employer. If you're leaving and add a new one in, if you're an administrator, please add the end date in for your employees and you can change the billing contact. So as, I, as I've shown you, so it's really important to keep this up to date because that way EOCP can make sure that we can get the information that you, you need to, directly to you. Once you've made all of the changes in the um, in the step registration, you'll get to this finish button and then you will click it and then you'll be have completed the step registration process. If you don't make it through here to the finish button, this this uh, process will keep popping up over and over again. So now that you've finished, you can apply for exams. So once you have your profile set up, or have gone through the step registration, you can do, then do your searches. You can use filters to narrow down your search. Um, detailed personal information is not available. A certification indicator will show for all operators. Someone who is certified will have a green thumbs up and someone who has not paid their dues or completed their CEUs for the previous reporting period will show as a red flag symbol. Here's an example of searching on the name Mike. The silhouette is the search for a person here. And um, if the mic you're looking for isn't here, you could try searching on the last name um, or he might be under Michael. Uh, you'll have to type out the whole last name in order to search on it. Um, he, he may not have a profile if you can't find Mike. Um, I'll show you an example shortly. And then this is a, the building symbol and that's to search for entities. Uh, if you're looking for facility or employer or training organization, and this example shows a search on the word Squamish. Um, the same thing applies here. If you only typed out part of the word Squamish, you will not get a result. And you can also um, use acronyms to search. So for example, BCWWA, MTS, or BCIT, for example, um, you can use the acronyms to search for these organizations. So I'll just show you that here. So 
Uh, I'm just going to search on this mic. You'll see the mic here will pop up. Um, I can also do a search on Jim. Same thing. Um, you can see here that there's 33 results. You can expand your search to make it make them all pop up here. So you can change this, the, the search uh, number of names in the search area. Um, and then I'll do a search here on Swamish again. And here, this has all of the organizations that have Squamish in the title. There's 16 of 16 here. And I'll just show you if you type out um, only part of the word Squamish, you're not going to be able to, it's not going to come up. There'll be no search, so you need to have type in the whole name. And then I'll just show you here that you can search on um, using an acronym if, if they've used it in their title, and that brings up BC Water and Waste Water Association. I just want to show you something here because this is a training provider. This is one way that you can actually search for courses. So as you can see here that they're a training organization and there's this tab called courses. So if you know the name of the organization, you could actually search directly on their profile page. So here you can see that they have 110 courses assessed and you can see the course number, you can see if it's core, if it's related, and the CEU value. I'll show you another way to search for courses okay. shortly. So under the career management courses, you can search for courses scheduled by some training providers. You can use filters to search by course title, number, type, or see if the course is core related to the certificates that you hold. I mean, you can also read course descriptions. So I just showed you the example of how do you find courses offered by a specific training provider by going to their profile. Um, so I'll show you how to do searches on the other way in a moment here. Um, so under career management courses, so you can, they're scheduled in all courses. So right now we, we've got over 4,700 courses assessed and um, the scheduled courses have, are listed by the training provider. Otherwise, um, and not all of the training providers use this, otherwise you can use the search for all courses. Um, and then I'll show you how you can contact them directly if you have questions about their course. Um, you can use filters to narrow down the amount of courses that are, you're searching on. Um, you can, for example, use course type and type in distance learning, for example, and then those are courses that you can do from your home or office. And um, I'll just show you that here. The um, career management courses. And as I said, their scheduled courses are put in by the training provider. So there's 44 courses scheduled right now. But here you can look at all of the courses that are have been assessed by EOCP. And there's well, 4,600. And then um, you can do course type and you can put in distance learning education, for example. And that narrows it down to uh, 181. And then you can see here, as I showed you on the BC WWA page, that um, this utility management course, for example, is core for all certificates. It's related for none and it's worth two CEUs. We, we have this other one, this people management skill course for Thompson Rivers, and it's related for all. Um, and then you could actually um, click on this the course itself, and then you can see the topics and objectives uh, with the agenda. And again, you can see core versus related in the CEU value. And um, here you could actually click on this and it'll provide you with an email address. If you have questions, you can email them directly. So um, you can add courses that you've taken directly to your profile by clicking on the action button and then add courses taken for CEUs. 
if you want to add your high school diploma or post-secondary diploma from Okanagan College, for example, you can click Add Education. So here we're looking for your, your um, post-secondary or your high school diploma or your transcript or Red Seal Trade Certificate here, for example, under for the Add Education. Don't upload your ceremonial certificate for participating in your high school graduation ceremony. It's not an acceptable proof of high school. Um, and these will remain in pending status until EOCP staff review uh, the attached document. So this can be added from your home screen by clicking the action button. And then under the learning column, add education. Um, or you can do this in section three of your application for certification. Then you can also add courses here by taking clicking add course taken. So I'll just show you that here. So under action, add education, this would be your uh, the name of your high school, for example, and your secondary school, and you'd fill in all the fields and upload the document and, and then, then submit it. And here you would do action and then add course taken for um, courses that have been assessed. Um, the course will have to be from one of the like the 4,700 courses that have been assessed um, through the EOCP, and then you will um, the CEU value should be filled in automatically, and um, the start date would be uh, the completion date would be the last date of your course. You would describe the attachment and then upload it. The CEU status can be viewed by clicking learning status then CEU. This example shows that the operator has met the CEUs for all but the current reporting period, which ends on December 31st, 2021. The requirements begin in the CEU reporting period following the one the operator becomes certified in. So for example, someone writing the first certification exam today will need to meet the CEU requirements for the reporting period starting on January 1st, 2022. Level one to four certificates have a 2.4 CE requirement, including 0.6 core for each certificate held. Small water and small wastewater have a 1.2 CE requirement, including a 0.3 core requirement for each small certificate held. As of January 1st, 2020, bulk water delivery has a 0.6 CE requirement with 0.6 being core for the bulk water certificate. O OIT doesn't have a CE requirement and the new building water systems has a uh, 1.2 CE requirement as well. So you've always been able to view your CEUs, but we now have a CEU summary report that enables you to print the list of CEUs on file we, we have for you. You can access this by clicking the action button, then print CEU summary in the learning column. I'll just show you that here. So action. EU summary. So there it is there. So you actually you can print it or you can actually um, you can actually export it as well. So you have a couple of options there. So we'll now we'll look at um, exams. Under career management exams, you can search for upcoming sessions, use filters to narrow down the list, and you can also apply to take an exam from this screen. So here you can look at all upcoming exam sessions listed. These sessions may not be available if you want to apply less than three weeks prior to the date of the exam or if the session is full. If you don't see an exam session in your area on the list, you can contact the EOCP office to see if there is a location near you that can be added. It can take time to source a location and may require four weeks notice to set up. Our exam specialist, Stephanie Hall, is the person to contact for this. So you have two areas to where you can search for an exam. You can apply for an exam from this screen or from your home screen. Um, so this is your home screen, so action, and then apply for exam. And then as I showed you here, you could apply for an exam from the uh, exam screen. So 
I'll just show you the two locations here again. So I'm on my home screen and under action, I can apply for an exam here or under career management exams, I can apply for the exam from here. Or um, if I actually find a session that I want to take, so I can actually, I'm looking for sessions in Burnaby to narrow the field down, and I want to apply to write an exam in April, I can apply to take the exam from here. I can see that there's four people and it's at 8.30, I can apply. Now, if, if the session isn't available, um, it will not show up. It's just showing that there is one, um, it just this this screen just shows all of the the sessions that are available, but there may be um, they may be full at this point. But it, we they're not removed. Only in the selection process are they removed. But for here, it's just a, a complete list of everything. Okay, so you must choose an exam date more than three weeks from the date you're applying. If the exam session you want to apply isn't there, it could mean the session is full or you're trying to choose a date that is less than three weeks away. So this part of the application has details about the application process, such as the documents that you required, fees, what happens after you apply, and what you need to bring to your exam session, such as government issued photo ID. And right now everyone needs to also be wearing masks. If you don't provide all required documentation, then the review of your application will be delayed. If it isn't provided on time, your requested exam date will have to be will have to be changed. If you choose to reschedule your exam with less than seven days' notice, there will be a rescheduling fee of fifty dollars. This section shows the re you the requirements for the different levels of certification. You can um, you just it's a, just a listing of everything here, um, and then there's multi utility here as well. This screen shows you, this section of the application shows you the different exam fees. And um, it, um, if your submitted application is withdrawn or declined, then all fees except for the application fee will re be refunded to the credit card number provided uh, to pay for the exam. You can also add courses and education in section three of your application. You must have saved a draft of your application in order to um upload documents in your application and as you were shown you also have the option of uploading them directly to your crm profile so this is very important all applications require the supervisor verification form if your form is not submitted there will be a delay in processing your application level three and four applications have a drc direct responsible charge requirement and this form must also be submitted for level three and four applications only. So you have the option to print the forms off here, or you can email them directly to your supervisor. So you can leave an application in pending draft status and go back to it at any time. If the exam date you selected has passed or is within three weeks of the date you access it, or if others have submitted and paid for exams in the session you have selected, you will receive a message to choose a new exam date. Space will not be held if you, for you until the application has been completed and paid for. It will then go into submitted status and then will be reviewed. To get back to your pending application, go to the action items, applications, then click anywhere on the line on the application. So I'll just show you that. So we'll go back to my home screen here. I'm clicking, going to click on action items and then applications. And then here you can see that there's a pending application. So I can just click on it and it'll bring the application up. So here is an example that the preferred exam date is no longer valid as EACP requires three weeks to process the application. So I have to choose a new date. So I will choose from the drop down available. So there's there's quite an extensive list, but I just have to make sure that I choose some choose something that's you know close to home or you know in the location of a course that I'm taking. So just make sure you when you click on the right one, people have accidentally chosen the wrong exam date. So I'll just choose one here. And then um, it's in draft status here. So then there is a, 
yeah, so then I can actually save it again, or I can go next, I can hit save the draft, or I can hit next to go to the payment screen. Okay. So the pending application is not gonna be looked at as it hasn't been paid for and is not taking space in this session. And we don't know why you've left it in pending status. It, it may be intentional and you have plans to come back to it. Um, so it, it's not reviewed. Um, only those applications that are submitted and paid for will be looked at. So this one here will not be, this one will be as it's taking, it's been submitted and paid for and it is now taking a spot in the session. If you're an operator whose employer pays for your exam fees, you should check with them about the process they wanna follow. For example, some will ask you to pay up front and then to get the application into submitted status and then they will reimburse you. And some may want to enter the credit card details themselves. This means you may need to log into your profile at an admin office, bring up your pending application, then have them take over for the payment screen to enter their credit card details. If you want to upgrade your multi-utility certificate to a level one or level two, please contact the EOCP office. We will provide you with the verification page. And once your supervisor completes the form, email it back to EOCP. You or your employer will be sent an invoice for, for the certificate once we determine you are eligible for the upgrade. Once payment has been received, the certificate will be added to your CRM profile and the new certificate will be mailed. This uh, declaration and authorization to collect section, um, it must be completed um, with the yes or no radial buttons. And um, we have updated the code of ethics. And so it must be read, signed and emailed to me at kims.eocp, or you can upload it directly to your profile. Um, so we'll either add it to your CRM profile in the activity section, or you can do that yourself. And this is the payment screen. You can pay with a Visa or a MasterCard. Again, the application must be paid for before it will be reviewed to determine your eligibility. As mentioned earlier, if you are an operator whose employer pays for your exam fees, please check with them about the process they want to follow. And um, once you click proceed, it will take you to a secure payment screen where your credit card details can be entered. So we do not keep your credit card details on file. Operators can apply to for a rewrite after a 30-day waiting period. The pass rate is 70%. So once the exam mark is in, is, is entered as a fail, you can go in and um, submit your application for the rewrite. You just have to choose a date that's 30 days ahead of time. Um, so what you would do is you would right click on this line and it'll bring up this rewrite exam box and then you would choose an exam date and submit and then you will be asked to pay for the exam. Um, the exam fee is $150 plus GST. Once you pass your exam, you can view the certificates you hold by looking under the learning status and certi certification. You have the option of printing the certificate by right clicking anywhere on the line for the certificate you want to print. So this is helpful if you need a copy for your file, uh, for your employment file. And I'll also, um, just so you're aware, once you write and pass your exam, you there's a 30 day waiting period be writing, before writing the next level exam as well. So. I'll just show you how you can access your certificate. So I'll just go back to home here. Under learning status, certification. So I just right click and this print certificate box pops up and then it'll just take a moment here and then you can see the certificate should pop up here. Here. So this is what it looks. It looks just like the one that we mail you, but of course it's going to be different. You won't have the embossed seal and what have you, but this will be great if you need extra copies for your employer um, for your files. So there's that's what the certificate looks like. 
So um, we have some valuable information located in the EOCP resource section on the website. We have a walkthrough of how to apply for an exam and how to apply for an exam rewrite here. There's some webinars. Um, there are other webinars available, facility and um, like a CRM basics. And um, for example, and then um, we have here under exam preparation, some really important information for you if you're wanting to write an exam. There is this need to know criteria here, which is very, very important. So our exam specialist, Stephanie, sends you this information when you are uh, approved to write an exam in a session a week prior to the session. She does send you exam details that does include this information. I cannot stress how important it is to look at this. Um, so um, there's other resources material available as well. Um, there's formula sheets, sample exams, um, and just some, some really great information here. So I'll just show you how to get at that. So under here, it's under menu. First, just show you the resources here. Resources. <clears throat> and then there, these are the, the webinars and the walkthroughs on how to apply for an exam and how to do a rewrite under menu here. Under operators, exam preparation. So we've got a couple of articles here that are really, you might want to have a look through. They're just exam preparation exam articles that were written our, written for our EOSP digest. Here are the need to know criteria, uh, which again are very, very important. And here you can um, do some sample exams on the, just to learn how to navigate the um, ABC computerized exams. We have some sample math questions. We also have our formula sheets here. And then we also have down here the um, how to, the nav to navigate the small water and wastewater exams. We also have some sample links for bulk water operator and training, small water and small wastewater. And we also have need to know criteria for, for these exams as well. And so these might be, um, you might find all of this stuff useful in, in preparation for your exam. So here we're coming to the end of the webinar. I suggest you go into your profile and click around to see if just to learn how things work or you may want to try out some of the things I showed you today. Don't be nervous about doing that. If any changes are going to occur, there will be a request for you to submit. So if you want to try stuff out, you can just don't click submit if you don't want to make the actual changes. If you do want to make changes, then then click submit. The more you use the CRM, the easier it will become. Thanks for joining me today. And um, if your question wasn't answered in the webinar, you can always get in touch with me at this email address here, kemes at eocp.ca, or you can call the EOCP office. Thanks so much and have a great day.